Welcome to our morning worship and prayer. And I am trusting God that as we worship Him and seek Him in His Word, that the Word of God would strengthen your heart, encourage your faith, and will inspire you for today. Lord, may your presence come into every home and office and vehicle and wherever people are participating in this time we have together. Lord, may you bless them with your presence and your truth in Jesus' name, amen. Si Yahweh ang aking pastor Di ako magkukulang Pinahihimlay niya ako sa Nunti ang pastulan Inakay niya sa tahimik na Batisan, pinanunumbalik niya aking kalakasan Pinapatnubayan ng bawat hakbang Di ako nag-iisa Yahweh Ang aking patnubay sa Landas ng katuwiran Upang ang alan niya'y aking papurihan Kaluwalhatian niya'y itataas Tungkod niya't basto Pagligtas Ikaw sa akin Ang lahat-lahat Yahweh 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 Pag-ibig mo Si Yahweh ang aking 
the storm. Like many of you, I am part of a family thread with my siblings and my in-laws, my two brothers and two sisters and their spouses. We exchange funny stories and photographs and updates on the children and grandchildren and, and, and all kinds of things together. And I was greeted yesterday morning with this photograph from my younger brother. He takes beautiful photographs around his house. He lives on a lake and sends them to the family thread and we all wish we were there with him. And when I see this picture of this flat lake, it doesn't always look like that, but this still water, it reminds me of our text today in Psalm 23. The most popular, most well-known, most famous of David's Psalms, even people who don't read the Bible, even people who don't know anything about the Bible, they might even know Psalm 23. So here we go. Verse one, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of God. May the Holy Spirit help us understand it and apply it to our lives. Now, there are two kind of paths that we see here, two places, two postures that David writes about of his previous life as a shepherd. And the first one is this idea of green pastures. And the second one is the idea of righteous paths. It says in verse two, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. And if you're reading the ESV, you'll notice a footnote by waters, it has the number two, you look down at the bottom, and where it says, he leads me beside still waters, the alternate translation says, besides waters of rest. Still waters, waters of rest. This green pasture idea, much of the Christian life is either green pastures or righteous paths. Now we'll get to the righteous paths in a moment, but Boy, it would be nice just to live in the green pastures. If you think about that photograph my brother sent me, um, you know, my life's in the city. It's rarely quiet. It's rarely peaceful. It's rarely green, and there's rarely still waters. My brother lives on a, on a farm with a lot of acres and, and, a, and a lake right in his front yard, and he, he torments me with pictures of still waters and green pastures and makes me long for being outdoors and away from the, the stress and the pressure of the city. So what it says in verse two, David is saying, he makes me lie down. It's almost as if we're being forced. And I don't know what it is about us that we have to be forced to take rest. We have to be forced to slow down. Um, we live a fast paced life. And it says, he makes me lie down in green pastures beside still waters and the result of slowing down lying down, still waters, waters of resist, of rest, the results, it says, he restores my soul. I think about what Jesus said in Matthew 11. And he said, come to me if you're weary and you're heavy burdened and you're, 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 you're heavy with, with stress and pressure and, and all the work, come to me, learn from me, take my yoke upon you. And what he says, you'll find rest for your soul. Rest for your soul. Here it says restoration for your soul. And, and there's something about being still, being quiet, pressing pause, stopping. That's, that's called the Sabbath. That, that's giving God one out of every seven days to rest. Um, there's something about that, but that, that's part of it. But then he goes on down after this, after being made to lie down, this idea of green pastures. Then we get to the next part, the righteous paths. And so he says, he leads me in paths of righteousness. But now we're not still because this lying down, we're not moving. We're just there. Wouldn't it be nice if life could just always be just stop? Green pasture, still water, beautiful landscape, uh, nice outdoor 
uh, smells and birds chirping and all that, but no, we have to start moving. So he says, we're not just laying down, we're not just laying around for life. That's, that's not what life's all about. That's a, an important part. But then he says, we have to get up and he leads us now. He made us lie down, now he leads us. When he leads us, sometimes we have a choice. Sometimes we just rebel and don't follow. We go the other way. He makes us lie down. There are times when all of life stops. Uh, the quarantine was sort of like that in many ways. We had to stop. But now he's leading us. The question is, are we following? And there are reasons we don't like to follow because in this path of righteousness, there's stuff we don't like. On the path of righteousness, there's a valley of the shadow of death or the alternate translation is dark valleys of darkness. There's death that says I've flown around evil. So there's evil there, but we just aren't supposed to be afraid of it. So there's, there's valleys, there's darkness, there's shadows of death, there's evil. And then he goes down and says, even we're having to eat in the presence of our enemies. There are enemies there. These are reasons why when God is leading us in paths of righteousness, sometimes we don't want to follow because we know there's evil there. We know there's death there. We know there's danger there. We know there are enemies there. We know it's not going to be like laying down by the still waters and listening to the babbling brook uh, go by and, 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 and laying down in red. We know it's not going to be that way. So part of the Christian life is green pastures. Part of the Christian life is the righteous path. And on the righteous path, there's a lot of stuff we don't like. Um, if that's where your Christian life is, then you're probably on God's path because when he leads us on the righteous path, we run into stuff that we would never choose to have to encounter. But it's not only the death and the shadows and the darkness and the enemies and the fears, not only that, but it's also, he says that in verse five, there's overflow. Our cup overflows. And then he says that there's mercy in verse 6. And then finally, the final word, he says, will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. There's eternal life. On that righteous path, yes, there are some difficulties. Yes, there are, are things that we would rather not have to deal with. But along with that is overflow. The mercy of God and the presence of God forever. And that's eternal life. Lord, I pray that when you want us to lie down by still waters, we would just do it and stop everything. And when you want us to get up and follow you and be led on the path of righteousness, Lord, may we all get up and get on that path of righteousness. Lord, thank you for the overflow, for your mercy, and for life eternal. In Jesus' name, amen. Tumaan man ako sa lipis ng kamatayan Takot ay walang lugar sa pusong may tiwala Dumaan man ako sa lipis ng kamatayan Takot ay walang lugar sa iyo ako'y tiwala Tumaan man ako sa libis ng kamatayan Takot ay walang lugar sa pusong may tiwala Ikaw ang aking tagapagligtas Ikaw sa akin ang lahat-lahat Yahweh, 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 pag-ibig mo'y walang hanggan, Yahweh, 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 sa iyo ko'y mana.
May you go out on the path of righteousness with the overflow, the mercy, and the presence of God today. Amen.